Hi, Ben here. In my last video, I showed you how to visualize the electron in a hydrogen 1s orbital. Today, we're going to move on and have a quick look at p and d orbitals. You see, as we move along the periodic table, electron orbitals get bigger and more complicated. To show you what I mean, I'm going to simulate an atom of krypton. Compared to hydrogen, krypton has a much more complicated electron configuration shown on the screen. Whereas hydrogen has a single electron which occupies an s orbital, krypton has 36 electrons which occupy many different types of orbitals including s, p and d orbitals. Each orbital can hold a pair of electrons, which means that among the electrons with the lowest binding energy, we should see an s orbital occupied by two electrons, three different p orbitals holding the six p electrons, and five separate d orbitals containing all ten d electrons. There's lots of quantum mechanics and maths which explains why this is, but for today we're just going to have a look at what these orbitals look like. If you'd like to follow along and make some images for your science project or lesson, pause the video and make sure you have Orca and Jmol installed. Links in the description, they're both completely free pieces of software. We'll start off by making a new directory for our Krypton calculation, and we'll open up Notepad to make the .imp file. This file should be very simple. All we need to do is first declare that we'll be using the PBE0 functional, and then we'll enter the coordinates of a single Krypton atom, again using asterisk, xyz, 0, 1, so that's 0 charge, and uh, 1 means that there are no unpaired electrons, and on the next line we'll type kr, tab, 0, tab, 0, tab, 0, asterisk. Now we'll just save that by going to File, Save As. Navigating to the Krypton directory, we'll call it krypton.imp, and we'll make sure that we are saving it as all files. We don't want to save this as a raw text file. We'll hit Save, we'll close this, and now we have our input file. To run the ORCA calculation, click the address bar, hit CMD, this will take us to a command line window, and we just need to type orca krypton.imp greater than krypton.out. We hit enter, we'll let that calculation run, it should only take a few moments. You'll see in the file lots of temporary files are being made, and hey presto, we're done. We can close this command line window, and we can go straight into krypton.out. We'll open up the orca.out file and we'll scroll down to the section titled Orbital Energies. This is the calculated summary of the orbitals within the Krypton atom. You'll see that on the left side here we have an arbitrary number system of the orbitals and here we have OCC which is the occupancy. On these right two columns we have the binding energy of the orbitals, so the more negative the binding energy, the more strongly bound those electrons are, the more energy you'd need to take in to remove those electrons. So the most strongly bound electron is this orbital number 0, and that is the 1s orbital. As we move down, we move closer to the valence band, which are the less well-bonded electrons. What we are looking for, for the purposes of today's lesson, are orbitals which are degenerate, that is, orbitals which are the same energy. For instance, these three orbitals, the highest energy orbitals, are all degenerate. Because there are three of them, that means they are very likely to be p orbitals. One orbital by itself is likely to be an s orbital, and these five orbitals, which are all degenerate, or more or less degenerate, are likely to be d orbitals. We'll just take a note of the numbers on the left-hand side here. We are looking at orbitals 9 to 13, expecting them to be d orbitals, Orbital 14 should be an s orbital, and then 15, 16, and 17 should be p orbitals. We'll just minimize krypton.out, and then we're going to re-enter the command line in order to plot these orbitals. With the command line open and navigated to the correct directory, we're going to use the command orca plot, and we're going to open krypton.gbw, and we're going to keep this menu interactive. And that opens up this interactive program that runs within command line. So the first thing we're going to look at is the type of plot. MO plots are fine for the purposes of today's. Two is the number of the orbital to plot. We'll start by plotting orbital 9. And then the last thing we need to change is the output file format. 
and the easiest one for us to work with today is the Gaussian cube format, which is number seven, because that opens pleasantly in JMOL. We'll then uh, generate the plot just by typing 10, and we know it's done it because it tells us out here that it's output the file krypton molecular orbital 9.cube. I'm just going to very quickly generate the remaining orbitals. And then if we go back to the Krypton directory, we see that we have got molecular orbitals 9 to 17 in dot cube format. So we can close the orca.plot program and then close the command line. We're then going to open up JMOL to have a look at these orbitals. With JMOL open, I'm just going to quickly change the color of the background to make it a bit easier to see by going right clicking on the main window, going to color, and then going to background and white. To visualize the orbitals we've made, we're going to drag krypton.xyz in, and then we're going to quickly open up the krypton.out file to remind us what orbitals we want to look at. Remember that orbital number 14 is by itself in energy, and we are expecting it to be an s orbital for that reason. So if we click and drag over the molecular orbital 14.cube into JMOL, we can see a nice spherical orbital. To get a bit more of a useful view, if we go to Tools and Surface Tool, if we select Isosurface 1, which is the only uh, surface we have, we get this kind of cut through planar view of the orbital. If we click Ghost on, If we click Ghost on, then we can see this mesh outline of where the orbital is. So the S orbital is spherical, and it exists entirely with one phase, and at least on the surface, we don't see any nodes, which are areas of zero electron density. Let's have a little look at some P orbitals. So we are expecting orbitals 15 to 17 to be P orbitals, because they are all degenerate. So if we click and drag number 15 in, we can immediately see this is a very different orbital. This is definitely a p orbital um, by its shape. You can see that there is one side in one phase and one in another. And then you can see that in the middle here, there is a node that is an area of zero electron density. If we click on to display and click axes, we can see that these orbital lobes are lying on the y axis. And so we could classify this orbital as the PY orbital. If we drag the other two in, we can see that orbital number 16 is localized on the X axis, and we can see that orbital number 17 is localized on the Z axis. This is actually just as we expect. We see three P orbitals, each one of them localized on the three Cartesian directions. But what about the d orbitals? What do they look like? Well, let's have a look at number 9. Compared to the p orbitals, which had just one red phase and one blue phase, the d orbitals have two of each. And we can see that there are five of them. So let's have a little look at how they look in space. The first three in energy are very similar. This is the d x, z orbital, because it is on the x and z axes, and the lobes are localized in between the axes. If we look at number 10, we can see that this is the d, x, y orbital, because it is localized within the x and y axes, and the lobes, again, do not lie on the axes themselves. And number 11 is the d, y, z orbital. Now, these three are very similar to each other and very easy to understand. The other two are a little bit different because the maths behind them is quite complex. One way of looking at them is like this. So here we have a d y squared orbital, I suppose, although it is much more common to see this as a d z squared orbital, so I will refer to this as the d z squared orbital. And then orbital number 13 looks very similar to the first three orbitals, but you'll notice that here the lobes are lying on the axes. This is the dx squared minus y squared orbital. 
Regardless of your understanding of them at the moment and how much quantum mechanics you want to get into, these are very useful visualizations for teaching and learning purposes. If you want to take a picture of this, it's very easy. Simply right click, go to File, Export, and export it as an image. Or if you want something a little more animated, go to right click on the background, go to File, Capture, not Capturing, Capture Rock or Spin, navigate to the relevant directory, give it a name that's appropriate for the orbital, hit save, and then you'll notice that JMOL will start to rotate the orbitals for us, and all the time it is building us a .gif file. If we just go to File, Capture, End Capturing, then we'll have a nice GIF, which we can use for our lesson or science project. Just to finish off, here's a summary of all the orbitals we've looked at in this video. As you can see, Orca and JMOL are powerful resources to make useful images to help you understand and teach about orbitals. I've put all of these images in the GitHub repository linked in the description. Feel free to use them for your own purposes, but please give me credit, it really will help the channel. I encourage you to have a go at looking at atomic orbitals yourself, and maybe even look a little further than I did in this video. For example, how do 2p, 3p, and 4p orbitals compare? What do f orbitals like those seen in the lanthanides look like? I'll leave those questions in your hands. Next time, we're going to move beyond single atoms and find out what chemical bonds look like. See you then!